Hi, this is Larry Jordan and welcome to the Digital Production Buzz. Our goal is to talk about everything related to digital video from production to editing to output because what you don't know can oftentimes cost you a great deal of time and sometimes money. Today what I want to do is talk about ways that you can improve the quality of your audio. And we're going to start with the absolute number one most important rule of all rules period, hands down, one, never use the camera mic. Never. Not once, not ever, not if you care about the quality of the sound. I can't tell you the number of people, young kids especially, that have come up to me saying that they've put years into their project, they're ready to enter it into the festival. All they have to do is take the echoes out of the audio and pff, they're ready to go. What do they have to do? The only answer is re-record the audio. And you can see their hearts break because they can't re-record the audio. You can't use the camera mic. The camera mic was never designed for good quality. It's just designed to pick up the audio from around the room. But look at how much bounce there is and how much echo and how hollow it sounds. First rule is never use the camera mic. Put your mics much, much closer to the talent. The second rule, equally as important, is you have to watch your audio levels. And you must not let the audio red light light, the clip light, the line that indicates that your microphone is so loud the audio distorts. The reason is, is that audio is stored digitally. By being stored digitally, it's only got a certain number of buckets in which that audio can be stored. When those buckets fill up, it doesn't have any place else to put them, and it just throws the audio out, little audio bits lying on the carpet, their bit feet kicking up in the air, dying slowly. We don't want that to happen. Our goal is to preserve every one of those audio bits for a long and healthy life years to go in the future. The only way we can do that is to guarantee that we watch our levels and make sure that that red clip light never lights, not during editing, not during production, not once, not ever, not even flash, flicker, gleam, glow, gl nothing stays unlit. Which gets me to my third point. Audio levels for people that are talking on camera that you've got control over should be between minus 6 and minus 12. Minus 6 is loud enough to give you good, rich audio that you can do a lot with. Minus 12 gives you some nice dynamic range. You had enough headroom so that your audio is not going to trigger that red clip light because the audio must not clip, not once. So bouncing your audio around negative 6, negative 12 gives you a good range. And if you aren't used to running audio levels, be sure to turn on that AGC circuit, the automatic gain control, to make so that it makes sure that your audio is not going to go and clip. And the last rule is never run audio lines near power cables. If they have to cross, let them cross at right angles because when they run parallel, the power, the electromagnetic force from that AC current leaks into your audio and causes hum. To prevent that problem, keep the cables separated as far as you can. And if they do cross, cross at right angles. It's long been a secret in Hollywood that the best way to improve the quality of your picture is to improve the quality of your audio. And that rule is completely true. I mean, we only have to look at things like Cloverfield and the Blair Witch Project to realize that video quality, even though poor, can be engaging if the audio is really top notch. In fact, in the premium version of this podcast, I'll give you eight more tips that you can use today to, to improve the quality of your audio. And you can also learn more by visiting our website. Until we meet again, my name is Larry Jordan, and thanks for watching the Digital Production Buzz.